Greetings everyone and welcome to Keeping Up With Papa, Life After Work, where we find out how one man manages to keep himself busy, physically active, and mentally engaged after retirement with projects. Today's project? Well, it's demolition day. Check it out. When the heat of the sun feeling out of control, you gotta <laughs> head a to a place button. where the water's cold. <laughs> it's just what I need. And I can't wait. I worked all week long and I need a break. It's a short little trip that you gotta make. When life gets dry. Take it to the lake. You gotta take it to the lake. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. So my neighbor Brian has a house here that was built back in the 40s and believe me we tried everything to try and save it and make it uh, turned into something that's really reasonable to live in but it's just not really possible. It's got all kinds of major issues. So uh, living here on the lake he's moving down sometime later this year or early next year and uh, he wants to have a nice house here so this one's coming down. So the demolition process is starting today. And actually what we're doing is he's brought in a crew and they're going to save some of the really critical materials or really nice materials from the house built in the 1940s. Which means, well, it's got tin on it and that's being do donated to a local church for a project they've got. The church has already come in and gotten some cabinets and doors and things like that, a couple of air conditioners. And now uh, we're going to be going inside with the crew. And we're going to be stripping out all the really nice wood that you'll see inside. It's beautiful old cedar that's on the walls. And then also the floors, which are 1940s hard pine, excuse me, hard heart pine floor. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. I did the same thing when I took my house down and reused it in a new house. So we want to save as much as possible. And then uh, probably tomorrow or the day after, we've got a big piece of equipment here already. We'll be taking the house down. Let's get started. So we're harvesting lumber. So the first thing we really need to do is build a rack up at the shed. And this deck has got a lot of lumber in it, but almost none of it is any good. So what we're doing is picking and choosing good two by sixes. Those will be used in our rack system so time to get out the sledgehammer start pulling nails my modified putting stroke here That was a three putt. <laughs> okay, making progress. The crew is making progress anyway. The tin's all off the roof. And the concept was underneath that roof was a whole lot of tongue and groove um, wood put in back in probably the 40s or the 50s and recovering that would be really nice if it were in good shape well they pulled a few pieces out and here's what they've found we have a little bit of, of tongue and groove which this is a cut end I cut with a saw we also have some flat wood just regular flat wood is a mixture up there in different places but the big problem it turns out is here look at how badly that's cupped now, the owner's intent was to run this through a planer and then maybe use it for accent wall somewhere. Well, by the time we got that through the planer and straightened it all out, probably better than a third of the wood would be gone. And it just seems like it's probably not worth all that trouble. This one's not quite as bad, but this wood has suffered more. Uh, you can see that it's um, 
a lot of pores on the inside, so it's really pretty brittle. So it looks like this idea is probably going to go away. Instead, what he's done, he's redirected the crew to go inside and get the flooring out. We'll see how the flooring looks. And if there's time at the end of the day, we will um, maybe go back to recovering some of the lumber out of the actual roof decking. One unexpected bonus when the roof was redone with the tin roof, they had to replace a lot. They didn't replace the wood, they just covered a large portion of the roof with plywood. And that plywood came off intact with very little issue and it's only about eight or nine years old and uh, we should be able to stack that somewhere and use that in future projects um, after having cleaned it up a little bit. So this is uh, cedar on the outside, right? What's back there? <laughs> There's obviously no insulation. Right. There's no insulation. It's just drywall on the other side. Is it? It is a kind of board of some sort. I would happen to hit the two studs right on the Let's just smack it a little more. Then. Open that sucker up. Ah, the seam. Is that an exterior? I, it's not. It, yes, it's an exterior wall, but then that, that material outside, that big shingle material is nailed on top of that. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay, nothing to harvest in there. Nothing to harvest. Alright. So the hired hand crew task of pulling up all this old flooring. This is all pine from the 1940s. There's a big story behind this house and I'll fill you in on that a little bit later if I haven't already. But every room has this three and quarter inch tongue and groove pine. Uh, this place was originally built about 1944 or 43. So we have to pull out all the cut nails. We'll be stacking it. And then when it's time to reuse it, it will be planed and it will be absolutely stunningly beautiful. I have it in my house from when we tore my house down about 25 years ago. Great tool. 
Now that a lot of lumber has been taken out of the house, the next step is to get all the nails out as we've been working on and to stack it. So this area over here, we're gonna take some of the lumber recovered from the deck and we're going to build a rack to stack it all on. So <clears throat> the workers have put a lot of lumber onto, the, onto my trailer already. And we just threw on these big long two by sixes and we're gonna use those in building a rack for lumber stacking. So that's next. It's now the end of day two, pre-demolition days. The house has been stripped down of almost all usable, future usable materials, and much of it has started to go into this dumpster. Uh, a little bit of plywood down here that we will be saving, but that's behind it is just scrap material. Off in the distance there on the trailer is all the tin off the roof, and there's not a whole lot left to try and recover in the house. So let's take a look inside. Living area. Most of this is completely recovered. Flooring underneath the carpet was all this um, tongue and groove pine, but quite frankly they just ran out of time for pulling all of this up. So it's going to stay and it's going to go into the into the dumpster when it, all the demolition starts tomorrow here in the porch area no one wanted the brick so it's going this is an add-on porch you can actually see up here that this was an exterior wall at one point because there's that ship lap we talked about coming around the corner still on the add-on porch you can again see some ship lap that wasn't recovered Back into the living area. And then the hallway, nothing really was done here. Um, the bathroom off to the side, just took the windows out so the glass wouldn't break and be on the ground when the building was knocked down. Spare bedroom, all the flooring for the most part was, was taken out of here. And we moved it up to um, where it's being saved for future use. The second bedroom, same thing, flooring is all stripped out. So they've got a good 250, 300 square feet of old 80 year old pine to use in the new home. This was a uh, French doors, double French doors, opening doors. Those have been saved, they're stacked off to the side and they'll be looking for a new home for those. The deck has been pretty much, all the railings been knocked down and we. We uh, used all that wood to build a rack off uh, up at the barn, pole barn, for future for, for storage of the wood. Demolition starts tomorrow morning, probably around 8 a.m. Sidebar, it's story time. Uh, all right, I'm going to digress a little bit and tell you a little bit about the history of this house. Now, back at the beginning of World War II, the U.S. established multiple bases around the country for training soldiers, right? Well, one of those locations was right here in north central Florida at a facility known as Camp Blanding. Now, prior to World War II, Blanding was a training ground for the Florida National Guard, and it is today as well. But when war broke out, the federal government needed training space, so in August of 1940, Camp Blanding was federalized by the U.S. government to be used by the Army as a training base for Army infantry divisions. Well, at that time, the U.S. government acquired about 40,000 additional acres through eminent domain to go with Florida's already existing 30,000. 
and then over the next few months they acquired leases on another 80,000 acres east of Blanding to be used as a maneuver area. This brought Camp Blanding up to around 150,000 acres. Interesting fact, in addition to training some 800,000 American soldiers, it was also a POW camp for German prisoners of war. Hey, bear with me, I'm getting there. Now at one point during the war, the camp contained a population large enough to be considered the fourth largest city in the state of Florida. It had 10,000 buildings, 125 miles of paved roads, and the largest hospital in the entire state. And then, when the war was over, the government found themselves with a whole lot of surplus housing. So, as I understand it, they sold those houses to whomever with the agreement that being that, hey, if you buy it, you move it. So, a lot of people here in the lake region where we lived bought those houses and moved them to their lake lots. Now, our house, when we bought our property, was one of those blanding houses. So it was Brian's, which is the subject of this video. Now, the really interesting part is that those houses were moved some 30 miles south, and then, since there was really no suitable access on the back side of the lake where we live, they brought them down to the lake shore and rafted them across the lake, and then brought them back up the hills and set them in place. You know, that's something that I would really like to have seen. In, um, in our case, when it came time to build, and I couldn't make our house work quite right either, I took our house apart stick by stick and saved almost everything. The result is we've got some beautiful pine flooring, we've got red oak floors that were in a 1950s edition, and then we've got plenty of a 1x6 and 1x8 tongue and groove pine that after I had milled it down was just absolutely gorgeous. I even saved most of the studs and I used some of those and some wall framing inside the house. But many of those, I ripped them down and used them as like window frames. 1940s heart pine is, is just gorgeous. I even still have some left in the shed. Well, back to demolition. The materials recovery part of this project, from my perspective, it's, it's now done. But the demolition obviously is not over. Now I have well over an hour of footage of the teardown and I don't really see a lot of point in playing all of that. But if you're like me, you may find this process interesting. So I'm going to give you about 10 minutes or so of what happens next. From the heavy equipment operator's perspective, what is next is really pretty simple. He starts on one corner and he breaks the house down mostly by pushing it inward and then picking up the scrap and stacking it out of the way. In this case he circled all the way around the house and he came back to the front and broke down the floor decking. The house was by the way off grade so there's no slab and he worked his way far enough in that he could knock down the rest of the structure that was still standing breaking everything up into small, manageable pieces as he went. They needed to fit neatly into the dumpsters. Then, over several days, he loaded it all into dumpsters, and hey, away it went. After that, he graded the area out a little bit. They brought in a crew to pick up a lot of small debris by hand. Then they brought in a skid steer to smooth everything out. The entire process took oh, about seven business days. It's scary just how easy it is to knock down a stick-built home.
This was about 10 minutes worth of work with that heavy equipment. Well, about half of, half of the house is knocked down. There's a nice brick wall that was inside on the porch area uh, used for, well, I'm not sure what it was used for exactly, but it's there. And you can see inside, I don't know if you can quite see up into the attic from here, there's a little peak of a brick chimney that no one knew was there. Uh, it was seen in the attic before, but apparently it goes all the way down to the ground. So at some point there was a fireplace, most likely for a kerosene heating system. He's taking this down bit by bit, making separate piles. All of it will then go into a dumpster. They'll bring another dumpster in when that one's full and continue to fill it over the next day or two until everything's gone. Here you have a good view of these cabinets. We tried to get out, but they were actually built into the wall. It would be a lot easier to get to now, but it's too late. Well, I walked away for 20 minutes, and I probably shouldn't have done that because there's not much left at this point. It's the evening of the third day after demolition actually began. It started on a Wednesday, and Wednesday they filled up one dumpster. Thursday they took out another dumpster. And today they brought in two dumpsters. And what you see here is what is left. I think you have a little hidey hole here. Well, actually, it's a septic tank. Um, it's got to be. There's nothing in it. It's just empty. And that was a lid that was on the top. Final day. And after a week or two of clearing everything off, we have a dirt pile that's being leveled out. After that, they'll be in to cut down some trees and hopefully start construction in a few months. It. Well, that's it. Another project successfully completed. And as always, questions and comments are welcome. And please remember to like and share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Keeping Up with Papa Life After Work. You know, believe it or not, I've got another project I'm in the middle of, so I gotta go. Papa out.